Hard by the southbound lanes of Interstate 85, 15 miles from Charlotte, is one of the far yarn plants. The company spins synthetic yarn that is weaved into carpets or woven into fabrics like Nomex that is used by firefighters and military pilots. This is the most exciting work that you could possibly have in textiles. Uh, to know that we're protecting our soldiers, our, our airmen, and, and, and all of our airwomen, and, and, and the, all the women in the forces as well, it's, it's just humbling to know that we're doing that kind of service. FAR began as a cotton mill in 1939, just as America was emerging from the Great Depression. It diversified into synthetics in the 1950s, and it no longer spins either cotton or wool. As the mill succeeded, so too did the headquarters community of McCaddenville. It is well known for its company-sponsored Christmas lights. <laughs> McCattenville has two nicknames, Christmas Town USA and the last mill village in America. A lot of people are missing the textile mill because the textile mills were good to their employees and they were good to the families and you were always assured of a job. <laughs> To celebrate its 75th anniversary, Far Yarns hosted an old-fashioned company picnic. There was lots of barbecue, rides for the kids, prize giveaways, and plenty of cajoling between workers. You've been here 55 years. Really? 45. Yeah, 45 away. You old, you too old. <laughs> The Willis clan and other performers provided a blend of country, folk, and bluegrass music. There were employee awards and speeches from company officials and North Carolina Secretary of Commerce, Sharon Allred Decker, a Gaston County native. It all revolves in how technology meets with innovation to create products that make our lives better. And that's what Far Yarns is all about. The celebration lasted all of a sunny Saturday afternoon, and it was topped off with a fireworks show. <laughs> Far Yarns is a family-owned business that is now in its third generation. It was founded by W.J. Farr and is now run by his grandson, Bill Karstarfin. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you all for coming out today. Less than 10% of family-owned firms last into the third generation, and Far Yarns is in the highly competitive commodity business of textiles. How did it survive? Well, the tagline or the motto for Far Yarns is tradition of innovation. And so many textile companies, so many companies in America, they had, they had one act. They had one way to do things, and when the world changed, they were completely unable to change with it. With Far Yarns, a, they've had a great crystal ball. They've been able to stay close to the customer. They realize the needs of the customer, and we have recreated the company over and over again over the last 75 years uh, to be what it is that the customer needs rather than what we prefer to do. Line employees Sandra Howard and Jason Wilson say success lies in the small details. The procedures that they, they instill in us have to produce good quality, do it right the first time. And in something intangible. Quality work, good um, employees work, love for one thing, and God most of all. Over and over again at the celebration, managers and workers alike use the word family to describe the experience of working at Far Yarns. And there was not that feeling of separation. Everybody knew everybody. At its peak, Far Yarns employed more than 5,500 people. Now employment is a little over 1,400. But the highly automated mills produce more yarn than ever before. It is a fact that was not lost on the Commerce Secretary. We are seeing some of the historic industries come back, like textiles and furniture. We are seeing that happen every day. Uh, and we are seeing expansion in new fields. All of it, however, is much more automated. It requires a different set of skills. Uh, it's robotics, it's mechatronics, it's automation. And so our young people need to be really firm in math skills and technology skills. The 75th anniversary celebration in McCaddenville also served as a tribute to J.M. Bip Karstarfin the longtime CEO of Far Yarns, who died earlier this year. I know that if he were here today, he would have delighted in 
catching up with old friends, and I'm sure he would have made a lot of new ones today, too. The final firework of the evening sparkled the number 75. It was coupled with the prediction that Far Yarns will be here three quarters of a century from now in 2089. I believe what lies ahead for Far Yarns in the town of McCannville is a long road made safe and smooth by people who, who are employed, cherished, and respected.